This is the Chrysalis Color Analysis Podcast. Your hosts are Christine Skamen of 12 Blueprints. And Jorun Harness of Nordic Simplicity. We are color analysts and we talk about how color can help you love the way you look. We aim for publishing a new episode roughly once a month, but the best way to make sure you don't miss out on an episode is to subscribe to Chrysalis Color Analysis on your preferred podcast app. Hello and welcome to episode 45, Neutral Combinations for Autumns. This is the second in this series. The first was episode 43, for winters, about neutral combination for winters back in January, I think. Um, the original question from a reader, what started the whole thing was about uh, elegant and understated looks for winter. And winters, you know, the, their colors are more contrasting and less varied in the wardrobe neutrals. Those choices, you know, white, gray, black, and so on. So, right. Hi, everyone. And so with autumn, we begin with a different group of colors that are naturally warm and soft and not particularly contrasting. What's easy about autumn is that they have so many choices among neutral colors, white, beige, gray, and brown. They also reach a fairly dark level with their colors, which widens their neutral options even more. More questions, I always think, is a good way to find more answers and kind of look around in the far reaches of the territory. So maybe we'll ask some questions and find new ideas hiding in the corners. What are Autumn's challenges with neutrals? That's a great question to start with. Um, I would say challenge number one is not looking good in pitch black or optic white, uh, which are, both of them are ubiquitous in fashion neutrals, but and in shops. So, but both of those are equally deflattering, if you know what I mean, on all but the darkest dark autumn. And even for the dark, dark autumn, there are better alternatives. And um, if I can go on, um, challenge number two that I can think of would be to get the grays warm enough. Yeah, warm enough or remembering my experience. And to be honest, it's ongoing. Just understanding what they even look like. Gray for dark and soft autumn, I think they're easier to understand but uh, and easier to find in stores, in fact. True autumn, a little trickier. If you put a few drops of olive green paint and a little gold in a pot of neutral gray, true autumn gray would be like that. But I get it. I mean, it's kind of hard to picture. Luckily, though, all three autumns have many, many choices besides gray. One more challenge comes to mind. Challenge number three, to not look sensible, not look over practical. So how do we add energy or interest? Why not excitement to a neutral look? So Yorin, when you imagine an autumn wearing a sensible outfit in neutrals, what are they actually wearing? Well, well, let me stop you there for a moment first, because as a Norwegian, <laughs> right, I'm going to do a double take when you always use phrase, sensible. <laughs> no, no, but how can you say over practical? There is no such thing as over practical. Not, not in my my view anyway. But I'm I'm Scandinavian. I'll give you that. So, how about we rephrase it and we use the phrase lacking in excitement. So, back to what you asked me, I think wearing an outfit of only mm, like a medium muted olive, that would be sensible, but kind of lacking in excitement. I think, am I kind of beating close to the bush here? Yeah. When you say dusty olive, do you mean like army or camouflage green? Yeah, I think... Well, I say dusty olive all the time, but I, I think army or camouflage green is is a good word, a better word, probably. Uh, it's it's kind of that medium olive green in the true autumn palette I'm thinking about. Yeah. It is kind of muted and, and maybe maybe it's not dusty, but muted. Well, it's it, it is a bit nondescript, especially if you're gonna wear it head to toe. Um mm. 
it's like anybody wearing all gray with no variations, I suppose. It's mm-hmm. just not as stimulating as what's possible, especially for a season of vibrant, rich color and neutrals. True, very true. And also, if an outfit has no difference in texture, you know, it's like an all over anything in the same. Yeah, yeah, meh. <laughs> I, I it doesn't ring your bell, you know, no. okay. So now playing the game, my sensible image, what's she wearing? Um, a true autumn woman, autumn, any kind of autumn, sweater or turtleneck and pants, both in medium to dark brown, practical, yep, yeah, but not somehow memorable. It's, it's probably very stylish to look at in that way. Autumns have of being very stylish, whatever they wear, but something is missing color-wise. Maybe um, an identity, something to make the look her own. She's added a shawl or a scarf in brown or olive and maybe cream and her shoes are dark brown, but wow, it it just doesn't add as much as it could. It's like motion without progress or motion without emotion. Mm. True. So again, we're talking no difference in texture. Yeah. And, and repetitive of color when really they could mix anything with anything in their season. Where does Autumn need to work harder to create interesting looks with neutrals that other seasons don't? Where might more planning around this actually come in handy? Well, or I'd like to say, how does Autumn's, or anyone for that matter, make neutral outfits exciting? So I would say there are three things to keep in mind. You could use contrast. You could use textures and you could use uh, interesting prints. Yeah, probably all at the same time. I mean, winters, yep. they seem okay with two color blocks and contrast. I find they can clutter up with color pretty quickly and probably the same with a whole lot of neutrals at the same time, unless they are worked into a print in some way. Autumn with two colors, even if this contrasting, I'm I'm working my way to something here. It just doesn't feel quite there. It doesn't quite ring the bell. Brown and cream still need something. Yes. Yes, that that third element kind of. Yeah, kind of like any of the things you mentioned or a bright accent, I guess, but we'll come back to that. I remember one time seeing a brown puffer vest coral lining in true autumn colors. Oh my gosh, she had a cream sweater and she had on these sort of golden bronze, golden brown jeans. It was spectacular. I mean, that just completely rang rang the bell. And the coral lining, I mean, could have been antique gold, would have been just as good. I also like to see texture that reflects light because warmth is so important. And the reflection of light is uh, a way of expressing warmth, you know, the fireplace kind of thing. Doesn't have to be a big area; it just has to be there. Mm. Yeah, that's true. But let's flip this and imagine the autumn woman dressed in neutrals who looks amazing. You know, as we did kind of for the party looks episode we did back in November. Um, well, I think the answer would be a little different for the three autumns. So maybe we should split this up and look at each autumn season. So we could start with, um, yeah, let's start with the darker end of autumn, dark autumn. They are close to winter, definitely a winter influence. So um, so has more to play with as far as light to dark comes, like a higher contrast autumn. Um, let's think about an elephant gray cardigan with an almond white blouse and really, really dark charcoal gray or beautiful espresso brown corduroy pants, something like that. So um, speaking of dark brown pants, is brown a neutral? I would say yes. Wouldn't you, Christine? Oh, I, I would agree for sure. Brown's an autumn basic and maybe... Maybe there's no season where brown isn't a neutral. And I like this look. It's a simple look. It's a bit winter-like. There's more formality, but I do believe it achieves elegance. Mm -hmm. Yes, and and dark autumn is one notch towards winter, so it makes sense, doesn't it? 
and and um, this dark dark brown that we talked about that resonates really well with hair color a lot of times too with people with dark brown hair so um yeah let's let's definitely recommend a very dark brown as a black alternative yeah i even notice when uh, something in an outfit like pants repeats hair color really well mm -hmm. I, I can make that connection really easily yeah. pants um, or, or even shoes kind of right it, it consolidates like you get a bracket and it looks really Oh, yep. it just looks very organized. Um, is jewelry part of neutral outfits? Oh, absolutely. I, I'm when you say that, I immediately comes to mind a wood bead necklace, for instance, for autumns. Yep, we included jewelry in winter neutrals too. Okay, here's my dark autumn vision. She's wearing a dark brown wool tunic, a leather belt with a noticeable buckle and kind of tarnished brass equestrian boots that are black with a brown band around the top uh, and a vest with faux fur trim around the collar, maybe dark pine green and warm black leggings. I, I feel like I'm describing what I would like to wear, actually. <laughs> I could wear this every day. <laughs> um, could you, Yorin, see a winter with wooden beads or feathers in, in their colors? Like you, I'm kind of suffering from autumn envy at the moment. Now that we're talking about it, it's so delicious. But and 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 I can see feathers. It's fabulous for autumns, but it's kind of not in my image for winters. I also can't see wooden beads for winter unless they were varnished or shiny painted color but then they wouldn't read as wood beads they would just read as beads so never mind anyway so yes yeah I mean you can imagine cool. something but you can imagine something better right away mm -hmm. you know Absolutely. okay I mean if you if you need to do this mm -hmm. and a, maybe a stylist would have some idea but it's like feathers yeah you could get fuchsia feathers but it, it's just a bit more particular you know it's not as versatile for a winter I mean, sure. I couldn't wear fuchsia feathers, just imagine, you know, but most autumns could do something with that. Sure. And then also from the dark autumn palette, the warm beige colors in the white or the neutral strips, which are interesting to me because they have the saturation for those neutral tones. They've got a lot of color presence. They don't look gray at all. They, they look like almost colors. They're like barley and ripe oats, roasted almonds, I think you might have mentioned. Mm, yes and then we have the almost blacks again enough pigment in them that they are neutrals with color like dark dark olive and very dark teal eggplants even navy yeah when i look at the three neutral strips so i often would just look at particular strips only the reds or only the greens because otherwise there's too much information coming at me so I look at only the three neutrals and I see more when I do that I see more color variation among them than when I look at the whole palette and which is when they just start looking much more neutral I see a lot more movement for example between green and red in the medium dark colors that you can really see that there are greener and redder choices uh, also you're, you're, I don't know if you know that I do this. I make a window with my hands with enough space for one swatch. And then I look at the color for like five or 10 seconds, because sometimes we kind of glance and think, yeah, I got it. You don't, you don't got it at all. It's got more to tell you. And then I move the window back and forth to compare two colors side by side. This is for our fun games with our palette episode, but I really <laughs> learn a lot. <laughs> and I could we could actually come up with an episode like that. I love their dark browns. They interest me because they're surprisingly charcoal or dusty within their darkness. And also for the the neutrals you mentioned, they're almost more dark than they are colored. Like this is still really quite a soft season. Mm -hmm. And then I wanted you to think about black because I mean it's dark autumn, right? You can't really not talk about black as a neutral. It it totally is there. And Dark Autumn's version, it's noticeably warm or soft or both. So it's either warm, like you could see brown or gold in it, maybe greenish. 
you we just wouldn't see a lot of blue or purple unless it's decided it's not going to be brown, it's going to be navy. So it's more it's more neutral than that, meaning grayer. And shine is good if there's a warm tone in it. It's like with light colors. If it's a warm shine, like a golden reflection or a metallic woven in, really, really good. And then dark autumn, neutral season, they have warmer, cooler versions of colors. So that would be a warmer black. And then you could have a neutral or a cooler black. Well, it wouldn't, wouldn't be blue or purple. And it's it's soft rather than pitch black. You know what I think of? I sometimes has I don't, but you're yeah, going to tell You're about to find it. out. <laughs> you know, um, more like iron black. So like if you have stainless steel would be true winter. Take mm -hmm. it down to lead. Now you're in dark winter. Go down to cauldron, you know, like um, bubble, bubble, toil and trouble, the witches brewing, that cauldron, that one right there. <laughs> and, and straight up black is okay because it shares so much with this season. But it... I think the success of straight up black is what you wear it with. So Turkish coffee, sugar and spice, really good. And then I think like dark autumn, right? It's a season right next to mine. So I think about it a fair bit. Black can be really dark on a lot of people or all those neutrals you mentioned, teal, eggplant, so on. It really can be quite dark. And I think particularly as we get older or maybe hair silvers, I, or it's just what I think about me in black. And so another thing that I do to moderate it, and I think it works pretty well, is to drop the neckline, like maybe even a little bit more open than a crew neck, and then make the fabric around the face sheer. I see you nodding. Do you have this experience? Yes, I, I, I'm nodding because I have this thing about as we age, we pull the neckline out so that there's more skin between us and the very darkest of our, mm. our colors. Uh, not so low that we want to do the cleavage, but mm. <laughs> but this the sheer fabric next to it is is pure genius. I like that. Well, I talking. you know I I film these videos and I have to do these thumbnails and I can I see I can see myself mm. in a fairly objective way. Like the trick is even for color analysts to see other people without seeing yourself. That's trick number one. And then you evolve into seeing yourself without seeing yourself. <laughs> it, it, you have to learn that stuff. But I can tell that when you don't have to have like even a scoop neckline, I don't think you need a light block and it can be skin or it can be fabric or, you know, anyway, I, enough about that. But I like that. I think that's good. And it's available in stores too. And then, you know, we think about autumn and brown, right? And those rich browns that you might associate with autumn, they might be more in the reds, which is another example of autumns using their color colors as neutrals, which we'll talk about. Okay, so fun games with your palette. Hide the beige strip, like the lightest color strip. And now let's look at the gray browns and the black alternatives. So on, on my palette, I think yours as well, your, and that would be like the second and third strips in. Yep. Do you, do your eyes pick up any amazing combinations? Mm. Excuse me while I puff about with the palette. The first one that jumps out is the navy. And I think it would be amazing combined with the lightest of those that we call Grages, the gray beiges ones. I think our listeners should hit pause and find their fan and play these games with us, don't you, Christine? Well, I mean, this is how we we make these episodes, right? You're with you. you we both have our palettes, and we ask each other questions. Yeah. How yep. do you see this, and what comes to mind? And yeah, I'm, I I agree with you. The navy and that light grage, that's mm -hmm. almost automatic. It's something mm -hmm. about them snaps. And, and even for a man, I can see any of those grages with brown or charcoal trousers would be amazing at the office or in a restaurant. In fact, he would have identity. That's that's that thing that can be too generically autumn, brown, 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 beige, beige, brown, beige, you know, you know? but navy and grage, that man's got identity. Yeah, personality. I think you said something yeah. about that, you know, you're adding something add something personal and uh, this sounds personal like a real interesting person mm -hmm. and and grays don't you think they really improve with texture again texture 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 corduroy to faux fur to suede yeah they really do 
particularly on an autumn. I mean, a, a person could still do these in a with an off what we said with an office shirt. Just add a tweed blazer. And and you know, as a dark winter, I I gotta say, I don't think I really ever think about texture. Do you? As a bright winter, do you ever think about texture, or is it really kind of narrows down into the autumns? I think texture is interesting for all seasons but it just it has that magic effect yeah. on uh, autumns can't afford to not use it this is it this is it as opposed to bright winter that are, they're almost fighting it so that it doesn't overmute their well, colors that's it because the colors are so bright yeah the, before that when you start adding texture it's quickly becomes overkill especially for winters who want to yeah, kind of um, limit the um, expression. Well, that's yeah. it. Or, or you can have items where, if only they had not added texture, made it woven or linen or something. This may be your Norwegian person will <laughs> be like, "What are you talking yeah. about?" But it it drops it from bright winter. Could have been bright winter, except it overmutes it because of the texture, and mm -hmm. so different things. But autumn's there. There is no way for it to to not work. Almost, if you yeah. saw. Mm -hmm. A medium brown sweater with a matte black skirt walked into an office. This is the woman sitting at the desk. Would you mm -hmm. see that as workable on a dark autumn? Yes, yeah, workable, but I would want to, to again, returning to how to make it personal, make it, make an identity out of it. Why not insert a light element or bring something warmer in? Otherwise, um, yeah, it might not carry enough interest. Yeah. I mean, it, the body would look solid and it would be dark enough, but it's not, it, it's something's bland. I keep coming back to this idea that two neutrals, it's sort of basic, you know, like meat and potatoes, depending, of course, very much on the items, the fabrics, the shapes, and so on. Contrast would help, but not confined to contrast. We're back to just add one thing. I think I would choose warmth. I wouldn't, I don't mind the all dark theme, but maybe like a cognac leather belt would still read as a neutral outfit. Mm -hmm. It would read as a neutral outfit. And um, yeah, add one more thing, like you said, an element of warmth, texture, just p pick something, anything. Yep. Add several things. It kind of wakes you up a little, it creates a little emotional response. In the same way autumn can add any number of neutral blocks, they also layer exceptionally well. And that's another thing to take advantage of. It's a very special skill that autumns have. Mm. Well, yes, so that goes for all the three autumns, which reminds me, let's uh, move on to true autumn. Let's do it. True autumn. Interesting thing about true autumn, we said with dark autumn that the neutral colors, that there's a lot of color there. And uh, true autumn, even more so, it's almost hard to tell where the neutrals end and the color colors start in the palette <laughs> because neutrals have so much color. Yes, indeed. Um, and here in true autumn, warmth and softness, they they kind of, in that, it makes for very colorful neutrals. Warm, soft, even terracotta, sepia, sepia. How do you say that? Sepia. I say sepia, but I don't know if it's correct or not. Well, in Norwegian, we have the same word in Norwegian. We say sepia. Anyway, mm -hmm. so everybody knows what we're talking about, um, like copper reds. Any of those would easily qualify as neutrals. Yep, very much so. In uh, Prince Edward Island, which is where I live in Canada, the sandy beaches, if you know the soil color here, the, the soil, the, the beaches, the color is a soft to bright rust, which is how we chose the image for this episode. In the picture, that's one of the many South Shore beaches at low tide. And that, that kind of soft rust, I think, is, is quite beautiful. I find also the true autumn person lighter overall in what they wear well than dark autumn, meaning a light honey white or golden gleam or caramel tones, lovely in outfits and, and occupying larger areas in outfits. Mm -hmm. Yep, I agree. Or ground almond or that color that I like to describe as the foam on cappuccino. 
Yeah, the lights are very much appreciated, at least by me, um, in true autumn. And dark, pairing dark with dark, even from the palette where you can wear everything with everything, I still, for me, it, it lights up a bit more uh, with a light block. It literally lights, it improves with a light block. <laughs> yes, literally. Um, like the lightest apricot or salmon combined with the darkest olive. Yeah, that's a great one. I don't know if I see the dark teal as a neutral exactly. It can be very rich in fabric. What about you? Well, no, I, I'm I'm kind of thinking that a soft dark teal could be a perfectly lovely autumn version of navy, and then uh, as such qualify as a neutral. Well, that's actually true, isn't it? When you don't have navy, it's it's this is what's going to be your your navy. If browns are so traditionally autumn neutrals, let's look at the browns in our palette. Do you see any amazing combinations? All right. Amazing combinations with brown, 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 brown. Uh, okay. So how about brown with marzipan? That nice, lovely, delicious, light marzipan color. It might need an additional dark area since warm beige with marzipan might be a little bit toothless on its own yeah <laughs> well <laughs> toothless is good we um we said back in dark autumn that two neutrals together wasn't really quite enough what do you think here is it true or is it is still almost too basic yeah i i think same as with dark autumn add a third element add a third color it's always a good style advice to add a third element, but um, for autumns, much more beneficial than for winters, where the third element might have to be kept very small or as an accessory. We talked about this earlier, but just well, that's it, right? Oh. When you think about autumn scenes, the third color or the tenth color, they're, they're not careful about the size of it. They, they, right. they, they just it's like pour it all in, and it's great. Yeah, it's like earthy and functional, you know, that we think about with autumn, mostly just using them to try to separate them from spring colors or summer colors. But boy, they leave a lot behind. I mean, autumn, it's it's the generosity of our world and the magnificence of it, the ability it has to bring tears to our eyes without having to look to extremes to provide that. Warmth, safety, strength, home nourishment, shelter, not to be underestimated. Autumn's also a word you used earlier, delicious. So it's not just straight up sustenance. It's more than that. Oh, Joran, I got a game for us. All right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Games, color analysts. Here we go. We're going to go on a true autumn voyage. You know, I, I mean, I love environments because I can picture colors better. I can see how they work together. Color is all about context. It's a language. It's about what's around it. So here we are. We're walking into a bakery. We see all the colors of bread crust, pie crust, pumpernickel, poppy seed bagels, you know, those slightly shiny crusts, oatmeal raisin cookies, that bit of texture, the light in the dark, the date bread. Can you see it? Are you with can me? Can I see it? I can see it. I can smell it. I'm just wiping saliva off my mouth here. <laughs> I can feel the warmth of the stone oven when you speak like that. and It's almost not seeing color anymore. Right? You're feeling it. it yep, you're, yep. It's awakened something beyond just visual data, you know? So let's put together an outfit from the bakery. Okay, you Ooh, go first. Goody, goody. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Me, 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 me first. Okay, I have a vision. So we have a baguette crust trouser, dark pumpernickel sweater, and for the third element, we will add a belt to the dark pumpernickel sweater in the color of ripe brie. Now that's not the bakery, but it's from the cheese shop next door. Yeah. And it's in the neutrals, right? That's excellent. Yep. Yep. Okay. I close my eyes. I walk into the bakery. I'm going to make an outfit. Croissant color, crushed velvet top, poppy seed brown pants, no, back up, back up. Poppy seed better for dark autumn. It's that not extremely black, but quite dark charcoal brown. Okay, mm -hmm. 
walnut brown jeans. And then she has a backpack. Dates. I, I'm like, I'm making a, a bread here. I think I often think of Black Forest cake as a dark winter outfit. And the three <laughs> autumns would have so many breads and pastries. It's just you're pairing together colors as flavors. It's it's amazing. And if we went into color colors, well, we could make pizza and bagels. You know, you know what I mean? Yep, yep, yep. Okay. And how about avocado? Avocado peel tweed skirt and a pale salmon mohair sweater and brown pheasant feather earrings. Yeah, that'd be just gorgeous. Be just gorgeous. And we're not in our environments. We're not really using gray a lot. It's tricky for me, as I may have mentioned. How would you, from any environment, do you have like a visual for autumn gray? True autumn gray? Yes. Um, I, I think... You know, those things that grow on rocks, the hard little things, lichen, is that what you call them? In uh, lichen, yes. Yeah. Those gray greens, how about those? Wouldn't they be good yeah. autumn pictures for autumn gray? And really of course, the elephant gray as well. Um, um, I also see metallic textiles in the rusts and the browns of this uh, palette. I don't... I, mm, I wouldn't mix metallic in with the grays because those would belong more in winter. Um, I think the reason why elephant gray is so great for autumn is that it's deeply textured. Imagine an, an, the skin of an elephant, very, very deeply textured, and it's matte and it's alive and it's very far from cold metal. That's a really another good point is autumn colors are would be warm to touch. They're not cold to the touch. They're warm. Uh -huh. um, yeah. For any autumn too, another idea, I walk a lot in the woods. And, and if you live in a city, you could just walk in a garden center where trees and shrubs are sold. The idea is the answers are all around us. And all those colors and textures within the bark of a single tree, the cut surface, you know, those ridges of soft golden wood we had a hurricane here back in september and i see a lot of cut surfaces of wood but the inspiration <laughs> is almost overwhelming you ever look at golden birch i don't know if you have that where you live it might be called yellow birch it looks like birch except for it's kind of pale golden color and it shines and then you get the curls of bark oh my gosh the the the, the leaves are golden or the, the bark bark oh no yeah. never heard of yeah. That's beautiful. I so I see this golden white textured jacket. Mm. And then you know how the, the trunk sometimes, well, in for many trees, trunk can have these dark brown striations. And that'd be a printed scarf. It'd be so good. Mm. I also think of bark like our hair color. There are hundreds of colors in a single bit of bark or the hair of a single person. Mm. And and the neutrals we talk about, right? They're not confined to clothes, they're hair color, eyeshadows. Um, and close, because as with homes, I think, I mean, I'm not an interior decorator, but neutrals are where outfits begin. So with a house, you'd start with the floor and you might not choose lime green because floors have less choices. They're harder to change out next year when you wonder, what were you thinking? <laughs> you know, you cursing yourself, looking for area rugs. And then once the floors are done, Next, I think, come the walls because there's just so much choice, but they should go with everything unless you want to pick furniture in particular with walls or you enjoy painting every six months and then leave the color colors for the seasonal cushions, the way plants do with their flowers. Hmm. True. So we did the bakery and the nature scene for true autumn. Let's move on to soft autumn, see what we can come up with there with our little games. <laughs> Let's do this. First question. So I, I always start with questions. We've said that softer seasons can wear as much colors together as they want. Soft autumn, soft, soft summer. Would you include soft autumn and neutrals in that statement, Yaron, meaning as many as you want, the more the better? Oh, absolutely. Yep. Prints, textures, all kinds of combinations. Um, well, you need the third color element, but why not say five, seven, nine? 
Yeah. All kinds of combinations. Yeah. I agree. It's a different kind of energy than soft summer, but the two color blocks, I don't find it. I don't want to say enough. It just isn't that interesting. It's some, you know what it is somehow two color blocks. It looks 2d two 2d meaning two dimensional mm -hmm. and autumn light. It, it part of how it creates richness and depth is creates three dimensional shape. It's round kind of light. And so maybe that's what it is about the third, the fourth, the fifth, without being particular about what the color is, it just adds depth. Spring light creates flatter shapes and they are two neutral color blocks M might be low energy, but what's missing is color buoyancy, color movement. Autumn doesn't need those. The neutrals are plenty, but there has to be enough to make a three dimensional shape. Hmm. You know how we think true autumn, we said earlier, true autumn neutrals have almost seem more colored than dark autumn neutrals. And I always, I almost find that soft autumn neutrals are more pigmented than true autumn neutrals. The avocado greens, for example, are greener. Of course, the beiges and the whites are more pigmented in autumn. So meaning less visible gray. So, so it's not saying every color family is the same, but it's good to notice the amount of pigment in your neutrals because you don't want to overwash yourself out. You don't want to look too close to gray. Mm. So what you're saying to soft autumns is don't dress too bland. Think of a think of a Mexican feast is what I'm hearing you say. Guacamole, tortilla, and corn. And and those neutrals being more colorful. The the browns in soft autumn are pinkish. And they're very much neutrals. And it's important to use these for contrast. And, you know, I can't stress this enough. It is important for all seasons to use your full range of contrast, whatever that is, if it's narrow or wide. Yeah, it really does liven up outfits. And and there, there's richness and there's glow when soft autumn wears just their, their neutrals. It might look as though you're wearing colors, but that's the ability both soft seasons have of making soft color what might look gray on somebody else, it becomes vibrant and exciting when they wear it. I find soft summer can dress too dark sometimes, but soft autumn, if it's going to be anything, it's often too bland, not too dark, maybe mm. even too light. And so, as you said, brown is a, it's a good neutral. Like if you think about that beach scene in our photograph and you switched out the color of the sand for cream, it, it just wouldn't be as impacting. It, it wouldn't be as, rich of an environment that you feel mm. you could just step right into. So move around your palette and for neutrals, separate out the neutral strips again and make outfits moving around just in those. Mm. And I say also the dark browns are quite burgundy rather than rusty. We have the burgundy browns and, and also there's also the golden sandy browns looking at the soft autumn palette. Yep. What about whites? I The color that I think about when I see those whites are raw sunflower seeds, different levels of light to dark, but that's the general green gray color. I, and I'm always amazed by how gorgeous this color can look in fabrics. It's really like you're kidding. This is that color because it's so beautiful in combinations, fantastic office shirt, beautiful when there's a bit of pebbling or roughness in the fabric, like a textured sheen. Hmm. True. Uh, well, you say raw sunflower seed. What well, that particular color? What it makes me think of is window putty. You know the kind of, you know that that the kind that old houses have around the window panes. Do you know what I mean? Oh yeah, century homes. That is a great analogy for soft autumn. It's an environment like our true autumn bakery. Yay. Right. Yeah. You've got the warmth and the solidity of the construction around you. Soft, polished woods, maybe a staircase. And then there's flowered lampshades with old lace, terracotta flower pots. The afternoon sun coming in the windows. Wow, I'm really taking this home. Brick oh. wall <laughs> or a, a, something glowing, a kettle maybe, because glow really like it's just gorgeous for autumn. What happens when sunlight strikes objects? But 
This is a softer glow. It's not metallic because metallic can be kind of sharp. This is more like the gloss that you can see on fudge, you know, when the sugar syrup is being poured. It's not, it's, it's not matte, but it's not oily either. So we're back to delicious and satisfying. Some colors, I suppose, could be called powdery, the light ones, but the overall look is better when it's rich and warm and strong. And for soft autumn, medium dark overall. There's this historical home here. It's called Green Gables from the story Anne of Green Gables. And it's decorated as it might've been in Anne's day, soft rugs, sepia pictures on the walls, water pumps with that metal handle, that could be great earrings, photographs and wooden frames, ivory keys on the piano. The magic for me too with this season in this environment is that so many neutral tones are being used, but there's no effort to match, to repeat. Actually, it's kind of better if they're unplanned. Do you think so? Mm -hmm. I think that's exactly what makes those old interiors so chic, you know, and they're they're kind of used and matte and worn in a pleasant way and and one of my favorites is those rugs uh floor rugs oh, yes. that are woven of of well in your in america i think there's a lot of the braided rugs but in norway mm -hmm. there's there are woven rugs made out of strips of old fabrics in mm -hmm. all kinds of different colors but it's washed and faded just a little bit but the color is definitely still there but because it, they're all mingled together in the rug, it's, it gives like a very mm, lovely... So it's not like a quilt for your floor. The colors are, are like mm -hmm. marled together more, would yeah. you say? Much more. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Oh, that sounds very nice. It's, well, it's, it's like those braided rugs. They are like that, exactly it, it's like It's a bit that. like they're that, like... yes. A lot like that, in fact. Yep. Yep. Yeah. It's interesting, you know, when you close your eyes and you walk into these spaces, what you start to see. The pictures on the walls, I see pressed flowers or in the, between the pages of an old book. That same sh glow off the spines of the books, an old photo album. Like the more you add color and texture, the more the picture enriches. Mm. And I'm thinking of the avocado greens with the gold strips that are their colors, but they're so good together. Imagine <clears throat> using those and bringing in a little of that pinkish brown as a belt. So good. So good. And, and keep in mind for, for folks listening that the references are to help you picture colors rather than styles. You can be as modern as you like in your styling. And um, But when I picture this house, I'm walking around. Wondering, maybe, you know, you could take the dark and dusty a little too far. And to me, soft autumn is a, a warm, glowing look, but it's also the sunny side of autumn. I'm thinking, for example, of maybe an old something, maybe a beach house or a cottage. So soft, honey floors, sand white walls that have welcomed generations of families. There's this his his something about history with autumn. You know, those mm -hmm. aged paint colors. I don't know enough about paint, but you have those like, buttermilk paints or or something that you would be on the doors and the staircases patchwork curtains you could really do so so much with uh with autumn and you never really have to fuss and it just sort of works on its own brings us to the idea that i think we mentioned earlier or you did that it's easy for autumn to wear colors as neutrals yeah such a superpower that the autumns have in that respect and, and there's just so many colors they can claim as neutrals. Olive, rust, teal, mustard, paprika, especially the darkest versions of them. Look at the look at the color squares that's are that are closest to the rivet and the of the um, color fan. Mm -hmm. So good. So good and, and really worthy of covering up all the other colors and just let your attention absorb them. And we said, you know, I see metals and jewelry reading as neutrals, where the color might read as a color color in clothing. I'm thinking about bronze here or the darker golds. Mm -hmm. I would say for all three autumns, among my top three for rejuvenating the skin texture using color or using clothing. And if you want to stick with neutrals, then it could be a beautiful necklace or ring. 
rings. I, I really notice how hands look with rings and bracelets and watches. And um, this would be a really beautiful, you could see a big green gold glowing stone. It would be so beautiful. And the hand would be, I think, a lot younger looking too. Never go amiss. Anyway, so don't worry if the color is strictly defined as a neutral or not. The colors and neutrals flow into one another. The darkest colors, yeah, I, like I said, I think all of those could be used as neutrals. Yeah, I think so too. Soft summer, the neighbor season to soft autumn, they wear a medley of grays and browns. But um, on soft autumn, that might lack richness. And with neutrals, as we said, use that third element. Whereas with soft summer, well, I'm not just not sure what we could do with just grays and browns. I think we'll come back to that in the episode about summer. Yes, we will eventually do one about neutral looks for summer. So let's save that for that day. All right. I think we're at the end of our little games here um, and our episode. So... Thank you so much for listening to us and we will be back with another episode. Thanks Bye. everyone. See you next time. Bye-bye.